today we're taking a look at the Netgear Orbi quad band Wi Fi 6E mesh system, and that's coming up right after this. So today we're taking a look at Netgear's new quad band Wi Fi 6E mesh system that should be able to fix Wi Fi coverage issues in your home. Before we get started though, like the video if you use Wi Fi and let me know in the comments if there is anyone out there who currently has coverage issues with their Wi Fi. And if you haven't already, then hit subscribe now so you don't miss a thing in the future. So full disclosure, this video is sponsored by Netgear and they've sent me the mesh system for free to review for you guys, but that of course does not change my opinions. So when it comes to Wi-Fi, I've always avoided using it apart from my phone just because of the poor coverage across the house. While I do have Ethernet dotted around the house, in my office where I need it the most, there isn't one. I also have poor Wi-Fi coverage in the office, so it's not really an option either. Now currently, I run it through my electricity and while it works, I get less than half the speed I pay for, so I've always just made do, but today we're going to be installing Netgear's Orbi mesh system to hopefully resolve all the issues. Now, we're going to install the mesh system and we'll then go through some speed tests and see what difference it makes to my connectivity and hopefully help you guys at home having similar issues. If we open up the packaging, we first have a quick start guide that's going to help get you going. Then in the box, you can see we've got the three separate towers. They're nice and modern looking and while I have the white ones here, they do also come in black if that suits your home better. Now, one of the towers is the main router and then the other two are the Orbi satellites and these are going to extend extend the coverage throughout your home. The main router is labeled router and it's got the additional 10 gigabits per second ethernet port on top of the other four ports and the 10 gigabit per second port is where we're going to connect our current router or modem. Now another great thing about this system is that we've also got ethernet ports on each satellite meaning we can use them to attach devices that are close to the satellite with ethernet cables instead of Wi-Fi. Finally, we have another box and this just contains the three power cables as well as the ethernet cable we need to connect our router to the Orbi. So step one is to install the system. Now something I was impressed with is the ease of install. Not everyone is technically minded and the thought of installing a mesh system may seem daunting but they've made the process simple to understand with step by step instructions that literally anyone could follow along with. So the quick start guide tells us to download the Orbi Wi-Fi app and of course this is available on the Google Play Store as well as the iOS App Store. So I'll go ahead and download the app. When opening the app, we get a step-by-step -step guide to install the system, and step one is to scan the QR code on the main Orbi router. The app opens up the camera and we then scan the QR code on the back of the router and let the app do the rest of the setup. Now next, it tells me to locate my current modem, unplug it from the power supply and then plug it back in. Once it's powered back up, we've got all the usual lights and it's time to plug in the ethernet cable from the modem into the 10 gigabit per second port on the Orbi router. Once we've done that, it's time to position your satellites around the home to get your maximum coverage. Now as you can see from the app, if you've got a three story house, then the best setup is going to be the router on the bottom floor with the satellite on each other floor. Now my house is only two stories, so I'm going to place my router downstairs where my internet already is. I'll then place a satellite at the other side of the house and then one upstairs. If possible, the satellite should be placed 30 foot apart from each other. Now that's not possible in my home due to it not being big enough, but with so many obstructions around the home, I don't think it's going to be an issue. It's also recommended that you install the router above the floor level, but I'm going to need to install some shelving in here, so we're going to leave it on the floor for now. With all my satellites plugged in and in place, I can now press next and you can see it's starting up my satellites and it automatically configures the system for me. Now while it's doing this, there are also plenty of useful tips that you can read through while waiting. Once finished, you can see it's detected my Orbi network, it says cables are connected and we do have internet connection, and then we have both satellites found. It then asks us to set the Wi-Fi name along with the password, but of course you can rename this at any time. We then simply set the admin login and password, and these are the credentials used if we want to log into the router and change any settings. After we finish the setup, it's then checking for firmware and it installs the latest firmware to make sure everything's going to run smoothly. So nice and easy to set up and with the Orbi system now up and running, it's time to do some speed tests. Now I've left my old Wi-Fi network up and running so we can go to different rooms and compare them between each other. 
So first up we have the garage, now this is separate from my house and furthest away from the router and where I saw the biggest improvement by far. With my previous router setup, I was getting about 7 megabits per second, but thanks to the Orbi, I'm now getting 114 megabits per second, which is a huge improvement. For my PC, I was getting 135 megabits per second over Wi Fi before, and thanks to the Orbi mesh system, I now have 305 megabits per second. It's also important to note that I currently pay for 300 megabits per second, so this could actually be even more. In the bedroom, I was getting 211 megabits per second before, and now I'm getting 229. In the office, I was previously getting 198, and I'm now getting 234. Now in the kitchen, I was getting 160 megabits per second before, and now I'm getting 256. In the front room, I was previously getting 146 megabits per second, and now I'm getting 273. And then finally, in another spare room, I was previously getting 154, whereas now I'm getting 236. On pretty much all the tests, I also get an upload speed of 50 megabits per second, which is my max, why I haven't reviewed it in the testing. It's also important to note that unfortunately, I don't have a Wi-Fi 6E mobile to hand to do all of these room tests, but if they were tested with Wi-Fi 6E devices, then the speed improvements would be much greater than the ones I have. The PC is the only device I have with Wi-Fi 6E, and you can see that's why it got such a massive gain. But as you can see, in all of the circumstances, my Wi-Fi has greatly improved, and thanks to the satellites, the rooms that were previously struggling due to their distance from the router are now getting much better speeds. Now, this was just my initial setup that I stuck with, but of course, you can change satellite placement to find the configuration that works best for your home and setup. Now, if you do need to change the configuration, the Wi-Fi analyzer on the Orbi app also shows you the signal strength, which is incredibly helpful, and it saves you time having to run speed test after speed test when trying to configure your home. Now the application also tells us lots of useful information such as the current configuration in satellites as well as what devices are on the network and then what satellite they're connected to. We've got the device manager that shows us everything currently connected and we can also disconnect anything that we don't want having access. We have parental control, Wi-Fi settings and an option to toggle on or off a separate guest network. And in here we can also enable a traffic meter or contact support from the app. In Wi-Fi analytics, there are also plenty of useful sections like signal strength, home testing, network statuses, and a channel interference screen that's going to help select a channel with the least interference. Now, for those of you looking for more advanced features, we can log into the router via the web browser. And we've got plenty of useful configuration options in here. Now, it shows us the same useful information as the app, but we've got a lot more options available. We can change our IP address, DNS, and MAC address options. We can head into wireless and toggle on 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi as well as setting 6 gigahertz only. You can also choose all your security options and you can enable the wireless internet of things for those of you that do use it. Under attached devices, it shows us everything connected as well as the satellites and their current connection status. And again, we've got the option here to add a guest network and add an extra Orbi satellite. There are plenty more advanced settings you can choose from. We've also got the option from router mode or access point if you wish to extend your existing network instead of creating a new one. Now, we've also got the Netgear armor that comes with a free trial upon purchase. And Netgear's armor protects you from cybersecurity threats for everything connected to the Orbi. So the thing I like most about the Orbi system is it's great for novice users as well as the more advanced. We've got the ability to change any setting we need including port forwarding, VPN services and static or dynamic IPs. And for those of you that just want a better network, it's a simple setup and pretty much plug and play after installing. Now it's given me a huge increase in internet speed across the whole of my house and as more and more devices are coming out with Wi-Fi 6E, it's just going to get better and better. Now, they're nice modern looking satellites that don't get in the way, but it greatly improves the internet for all of your devices. Now, of course, I've placed the link for the Orbi quad band mesh system down in the description below, so you guys can go ahead and check it out now. But of course, if there's anything I've missed or you've got any questions at all, then just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, smash the thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down twice, and I'll see you guys in the next one.